Dear Journal, you may have noticed that I am not a religious person, but one thing I do religiously is go geocaching on International Geocaching Day, which happens to fall on International Latex Balloon Dominatrix Day, which makes it hard to figure out what to wear, but among all the holidays I have heard about, IGD is the only holiday where you end up looking for fake rocks and saying things like this. Uh, no. Oh, I stuck my finger in webs. I stuck my finger in webs. Yeah, that's just a little something us older geocachers refer to as web browsing. Hey -o! Hilarious jokes aside, one thing I did learn on IGD23 is that even after hundreds of fines over years of caching, including what probably amounts collectively to dozens of hours spent under bridges, I am frankly still a novice. And here, feeling that up left and right. Same thing with the other side. There's some clear hiding spots, and I'm going nuts. I cannot for the life of me find it. <laughs> this is right there. <sighs> well placed. So, no matter how many you find, I'm sure you're still going to be doing little things like that. Happy International Geocaching Day. And now, a simple announcement regarding social media. I have created a Discord server because it's a format that reminds me of IRCs or diverse dial servers from the 80s and 90s. Keep in mind that it is not a geocaching only place. It's a skimbosh place. It's probably going to be geocaching heavy, but I don't have any big plans for it. I just feel like I have these fragments of conversations going on across various sites and perhaps I can condense some of them. And I'm not going to lie, I always wanted to run a BBS when I was younger, but by the time I was old enough to do it, the WWW started happening. So, stop on in and say hello, or stay for the constant non sequiturs and rambling stories about things like Diversidial. Things that will have you saying, I wish this was a geocaching only place. Speaking of vanity, I also made an Instagram account because I never liked Facebook, and I'm totally ditching Twitter, but I do like sharing cat and dog videos, real and puppet, shut up Owen, as much as the next person. Links are in the description. Links for everyone! Let's do some shots. After a hard day of geocaching, I sat down at the home fire pit Mark IV and offered up cheer to these geocaching people in particular. Yes, I bought this whiskey because it said knob. <laughs> knob. A toast, journal. A toast to the GIF 2023 finalists, uh, particularly the ones that I know about, or know of, or talk to. I guess I'm friends with, in the lightest of terms. That sounded rude. That's not what I meant. I meant that I just kind of know you guys casually online. The dynamic dad and daughter duo. Tomakino and the kid. Also, Gio Elmo, John. Yeah, I know you've been uh, working on your skills there. Congrats. And Cash Canada. So that's uh, three vloggers right there. Three from our crew. Salute. Ooh, it's warm. Yeah. <laughs> Journal, guess who's lightheaded? <laughs> so anyway, to the geocaching vlogger. Congrats on, where's my shot? Well, congrats on 100K. Most impressive. Mm. Ooh. <clears throat> Journal, when TweetDeck was still a thing, I was watching the geocaching tag and I stumbled across nudist Matt who posted a picture of himself somewhere in Wisconsin I believe uh, he was naked holding a cache and I took the picture and instead of putting a censored bar on his wang I cropped out the uh, geocache size chart that's on every cache page and I did it for a micro so it said micro and I covered his cockles with that and then I posted it on Reddit, and I, I laugh now, but I, I feel kind of guilty about that because in other communities, it was it was talked about in the nudist community, uh, you know how it says that on Reddit, also being discussed in, and um, wasn't body shaming, making a dick joke. Uh, it's a nudist Matt. I switched to, to to beer. I can't be doing that hard liquor anymore. But the nudist Matt, thanks for having a sense of humor.
cheers all around. And you know, I don't know if it's karma, but since then it sure does seem like a lot of other nudists have shown up in my Twitter feed, which I can assure you is not an additional reason I'm leaving that site in the dust. Well, I better pee on the fire to put it out. Whoa! <laughs> okay, that's not really me, obviously, that was my wife. And you wrote, can we talk about these nuts, please? No, I'm not still talking about nudists, I'm talking about these fake guys here. Oh, loosey-goosey. Oh no. Oh, that's not a cash. Oh, oh. Whoops, that's a real one. Hands up if you've ever accidentally partially disassembled a guardrail while searching for a cache. Yeah, here we go. Fake nuts, baby. Another geocacher's paradox. If there is a high difficulty cache that is indicated by satellite view to most likely be on a guardrail and it has a bunch of favorite points, then it is most likely a fake nut slash screw slash bolt cache. You just can't make one that's good without people wanting to favor it, which will eventually give it away. And that got me thinking, what other paradoxes are there in the geocaching world? So I sat down to give it some thought and came up with nothing. Sorry. Maybe later. It's time for me to leave in the S5000 geocaching mobile. Be safe out there. Uh, minor problem here. But it's not the wrong key. Please start. Okay. Well, that should be fun later on.